In the 8th tutorial in the MPS tutorial series, we'll cover the setup of custom attachments. Overall, this will be a streamlined process using data tables and enums, however, the system allows for further customization beyond. The following assets have been used, which you can get at Sketchfab, linked in the description so you can follow along. Light Grip by Pilgrim Games. Fram Oil Filter by Jonathan Goswick. Surefire 660 Weapon Light by 8C on Dude. OKP7 Reflex Side by Minty Elzevirs. Weapon Scope Modern by Marku K. Let's start with the front of the weapon, the muzzle. Import the asset and apply the materials as we've done before. Go to the socket manager which can be found under window. Add a socket at the base of the mesh and another at the tip. Name the tip socket muzzle flash without spacing. Next, find the enum folder within the blueprints folder. Open enum attachments and add a new enumerator. Give it the same name as the attachment and copy that name. Now go to the attachment subfolder and open the appropriate enum. In this case it will be enum muzzle. Again, add a new enumerator and paste the name. Lastly, go to the data tables folder and open the DT muzzle. Duplicate or add a new row and give it the same name. Select the previously created enumerator in the first row and make sure the socket is muzzle. Select the mesh, VFX and SFX as you desire. Below you'll find the option to toggle is silenced, which modifies the sound. Lastly, you can modify the recoil and spread of the weapon. Now we'll need to add the attachment to the weapons we deem compatible. Go to the weapon blueprint, for example, the shotgun. Under class defaults, find the default category and the compatible attachment subsection. The reason why we created two enums and add the attachment to specific weapons is to prevent unwanted results, i.e. a sniper scope on a pistol, and to potentially allow attachment unlocks. At this point, we can test the new muzzle. As you can see the orientation is off. Thankfully there is a way to quickly fix this, without having to go into any DCC software. Open the static mesh and navigate to the details pane. Find the import settings section and transform subsection. Edit the rotation and re-import the mesh. Lastly, the sockets need to be readjusted. Import the flashlight and set up the material and textures. Add a socket to the flashlight at the tip called light. Once again, add the flashlight to the attachment enumerator and now to the side rail enumerator. Now add it to the side rail data table, ensuring that the fitting enum is selected and the correct socket name is chosen. Pick the flashlight mesh and toggle the option for laser or flashlight as you see fit. Lastly, add it to the desired weapon's compatible attachment lists. In-game, you can toggle the flashlight on and off by pressing caps. If you've added a laser, you can toggle it on and off with L. The key bindings can be changed inside the settings menu in-game or in the project input settings. So far, adding attachments has been quite simple and the main idea carries over, however, the optics and under-barrel attachments have more capabilities and therefore require a deeper customization.
As before, import the mesh. To demonstrate the intricacies of the picture-in-picture -picture scope, we'll be using a high-powered scope. Note, for the PIP, the material elements or slots matter. The first material element, 1, will be used to render the PIP, not element 0. The rest of the material order doesn't matter. We also need to set up the sockets. Once again, the naming is important, so you need to add the prefix at underscore to the beginning of the socket name. This will allow the ADS tool to pick the correct location. So you want to place the sockets exactly in line to where the aim point should be. You can create multiple aim points. In this example, we'll have the scope view and an iron sight on top. Lastly, add a capture socket to the front of the scope. This will be the attachment point for the camera rendering the scope view. You may need to rotate by 90 degrees. As per usual, we'll be adding another entry to the enum attachment and to the enum optics list. Within the data table of optics, you'll be finding more options this time. Create a new row or duplicate an existing one. Choose the correct optic enum. Use the optics socket for the correct attachment to the weapon mesh. The aim pose ID will be defined later so you can leave it for now. Since this optic has a secondary aiming point we can type at underscore backup for the secondary socket. You could even add a secondary mesh, which we won't be utilizing in this case. The iron sight plus canted sight and RDS plus canted sight optic setup make use of this, so you can reference these. Next, you have the option to tick picture in picture for magnified scopes. You can then select a scope and an unscoped material. Lastly, you can adjust the zoom factor of the scope with the PIP FOV float and adjust the overall zoom with the optics FOV float. Make sure to add the optic to your desired weapons compatible attachments list. At this point, I want to show you a neat feature on the weapon blueprint itself. The HK's iron sights would be obstructing the optics view. Therefore, I separated the mesh and created an up and collapsed version of it. Then I've imported them, already correctly aligned to the optics socket. I then created this logic inside the construction graph of HK433. It basically attaches the iron sight to the weapon mesh but chooses the version based on whether there is an optics mesh or not. Here you can see the result with an optic attached. A simple way to up the quality of the first person experience. Back to the new optic itself, we can now make use of the ADS tool once again. Thanks to our socket setup before, the tool automatically recognizes the scope center and the backup site position. Use the slider to adjust the eye relief. Open the AnimBP underscore MPS master, make sure preview instance is changed to the runtime blueprint. Go to tools, create asset, animation, current pose. Save it in your weapons animation directory. A new window will pop up showing the animation. Scroll down to additive settings, choose the additive type to be local space, the base pose type to selected animation frame and choose the weapons aim idle animation. Now we have an additive animation. Add this to the animation composite, i.e. HK433 underscore poses, and reference its entry number. In this case we have number 4 for the main site and number 5 for the backup site. Pick these numbers for the aim pose ID inside the optics data table. To finish the scope, you probably want to edit the scope material. Create a new material instance from the M underscore sci-fi underscore scope material. This material is divided into several sections. First, we can choose the rectical texture, its color and emissive strength as well as its scale. The next section allows you to change the glass tint, its surface properties with a scratches material, its roughness and specular strength and also a faked curvature via a normal texture. The global scalar and texture parameter values can be ignored. The lens effects section allows you to set a parallax normal map to create the depth illusion of a scope and its distortion scale. The rim section defines the border material and its depth to achieve the visual presentation of the scope length. It's best to adjust those while visualizing the scope. So jump in game and open the ADS tool to remain aiming. 
The update also comes with the addition to be able to hold breath to stabilize aiming. It reduces camera shake and further zooms in on the target while draining stamina. Once out of stamina, the camera will shake strongly while catching breath. Finally, we'll be adding an under-barrel attachment or foregrip. I opted for a slightly angled foregrip, which means that we need to create a new pose for the left hand. This gives us a chance to make use of the sequencer again. But first, let's add the foregrip to the enum attachment list and the enum underbarrel list. Then add a new row to the underbarrel data table and make sure modify grip is checked. The grip ID can be left blank for now. Modify the recoil states to your liking. Add it to the desired weapons compatible attachments list. For this showcase, we'll be adding it to the AK. Open the sequencer level and duplicate the AK idle sequence. We'll be using this to pose the left hand to match the new grip. Unfortunately, you can't attach a static mesh to its skeletal mesh inside the outliner. As a workaround, since this will only be a one-frame pose, I've simply placed the foregrip in the level where it matches the desired location underneath the barrel. Then you simply pose the left hand and its fingers until you're happy and bake the animation. We need to set a few things up to actually make use of this new foregrip pose animation. First, add a new socket to the weapon with the name LH underscore target. This will later drive the pose offset. Then open AnimVP underscore MPS master and find the left hand grip section on the Anim graph. Disconnect the sequence evaluator node as shown and connect the simple animation sequence node to the false pose pin. Make sure to also choose the newly created foregrip animation. Open the LH underscore offset macro and connect the socket transform to the true pin. This activates the socket we just created on the weapon skeleton. Now jump in game, select the grip from the loadout menu and press F8 to exit game mode. You'll the new left hand pose playing, but not in the correct position. To fix this, open the weapon skeleton window and place it, so that you have both screens in view and move slash rotate the socket so that the hand moves to the correct position. This updates in real time, however the axes don't match so the movement will feel a bit unnatural. Just bear with it, eventually you'll get it right. Once you're happy with the pose, copy the relative location and rotation. Open the MPS Anims data table, select the AK and scroll all the way down to LH Grip Transforms. Create a new entry for the array and paste the socket transforms. The array entry needs to match with the animation entry. Currently, the transforms are in entry 1, so make a note of that. Now create a new animation pose as before through the Animation Blueprint, Tools, Create Asset, Animation, Current Pose. Save it in your weapons animation directory. This time, you won't have to change it to an additive animation. Once that's complete, reconnect the transform array in the LH underscore offset macro and the sequence evaluator node to the false pose pin in the anim graph. Create a new anim composite by right-clicking the new animation pose in the content viewer. As we've determined before, the transform array entry is not zero, but one, because the zero entry is already occupied by the vertical grip. This means that the new pose inside the composite needs to fall into slot number 1. Either you already have another pose you can place at 0 or you can just have the same pose twice, so that it also ends up at slot number 1. Add the pose composite to the MPS Anim data table. Done! This method allows you to iterate on the left-hand position without having to alternate previous animations while certainly changing the feel for the gun. Thanks for watching! If you followed all the tutorials up till now, you are able to fully customize the first-person and third-person experience using MPS version 3.